100 more tips, tricks, and trivia that you may not have known about in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Hello everyone and welcome to the video. This is technically part two to a video I did a while ago. I would like to continue this in the future, so leave your tips, tricks, and trivia, etc. in the comments of this video and I'll take a look at them when I go and do a part three, part four onwards in this series. Keep in mind for this video, it's going to be focused, although it will be focused on Xenoverse 2. We will be taking a look as well at Xenoverse 1 and just the Dragon Ball Xenoverse series in general as of so far. And before we do get into it, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you have not subscribed as about 50% of you watching this part right now are not actually subscribed. So please just go and check to see if you still are subscribed or go and see if you are subscribed in general. And with that said, once again, here are 100 more tips, tricks, and trivia that you probably didn't know about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. When you join any online lobby, whether it be a play match, an endless battle, an online parallel quest, a raid, or any of the other number of online lobbies, your connection will always appear as a 5-bar connection from your perspective, even if you have a bad connection. The key Blast cancels are part of the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 PvP meta. A key Blast cancel is when you cancel the animation of what you're doing by shooting a basic key Blast and then instantly stepping out of the way. For example, if you are just going for a basic combination string on your opponent and then your opponent vanishes, instead of you either vanishing or stopping or going for a back hit, which can be perfect blocked or even count with a skill such as reverse Mebuku Senko, you can instead fire a base, just one basic key blast and then instantly step forwards, backwards to the sides or what have you to then get into a safe position to then continue. The Times 100 Big Bang Kamehameha Ultimate Attack has a sort of secret second function and that is if you use it locked off, it will rotate, making it Quite a surprise if your opponent doesn't know they can do that and or if they are just not anticipating it. If you're in any of the Super Saiyan Awoken skills on your CAC, your custom character, your avatar, whatever you want to call it, you can hold down the heavy input on PS4, PS5. This is the triangle button. If you hold it down fully, you will snap vanish. A snap vanish is when you do what I previously just said and you can teleport with a heavy attack, a fully charged heavy attack. And if your opponent is either guarding, going for an ultimate attack or using fighting pose F, this will break their guard. If you go to the title screen and click on options, you can actually change the controller presets. Now, I want to say one of the presets I think is a preset that more so resembles the controls from the Dragon Ball Raging Blast series. The blaster ball super attack can be prolonged depending on how fast you can click the input and if you have enough key to do so. Don't sleep on this skill. This skill has got me out of quite a few sticky situations. Do not sleep on this skill. Depending on the situation and the stage, the spirit bomb super attack will rebound but it will go through solid matter. Um, this must be a glitch, but if you launch the Spirit Bomb Super Attack and your opponent moves out of the way of it, it can go through, I believe it works on the World Tournament stage, it'll go through the stands and then come back and possibly hit your opponent. You can get a guaranteed successful grab if you immediately go for the grab after getting a successful perfect block, also known as a just guard. There are a few ultimate attacks in Xenoverse 2 which can actually be used as a back hit ultimate attack. These include skills such as Soul Punisher, Crush Cannon and Power Rush. Paul Power Super Saiyan Broly from the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, his super attacks can be used if you have enough stamina and key while you're being attacked. The Crush Cannon Super Attack can actually one-shot your opponent if it's fully 
charged and also you can pause the charging of this attack by clicking the guard button you can actually increase the hits on the super mad dance super attack from just three hits to five hits if you use it while in any of the super sane awoken skills super god fist will connect if you use it immediately after sending your opponent back with a knockback stamina breaks don't work in every situation and what i mean by this is one example is ice cannon if you use ice cannon successfully and freeze your opponent if you then go next to them and go and try to use either a light or a heavy stamina break although it will connect it's not going to break your opponent's stamina but it will still do a bit of damage and knock them flying back out of the ice the vanisher guard evasive was renamed to punisher guard uh, yeah sure <laughs> It was such a random thing that they changed. I, I still don't know why they bothered with that in all fairness, but yeah, Vanisher Guard was renamed to Punisher Guard. There's special dialogue, or maybe more accurately, glitched dialogue, if you pick Super Saiyan God Goku versus Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Super Saiyan God Goku sounds like Super Saiyan 4 Goku. It's very weird. So with that said, do take a listen. How about it, Kakarot? Now can you fight without holding anything back? You're amazing, Vegeta. Now let's fight. It took... It took five years for the in-game Canton City Information Board to actually work as it was intended. It now works and shows you the upcoming as well as the ongoing events in Xenoverse 2, such as when there's going to be, or when it's announced that there's going to be a Canton City TV broadcast, a raid, a world tournament event, even when there's a different lineup in the TP Medal store. Despite the name of the evasive being Instant Raise, you can use Instant Raise to go both up as well as to go down. If you ever notice white mist around any character, either that being your custom character, your cack, your avatar, or an original character, that white mist means that there is currently a super soul taking effect. The cheapest items you can buy in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 for 50 zenny each are the following. An energy shard, an aura shard, a guard shard, an antidote drop and a shape up drop once again all for just 50 zenny each the most expensive item you can buy with zenny in dragon ball xenoverse 2 is the soul punisher ultimate skill for 150 thousand zenny strangely enough both first form Cell and First Form Freezer have their First Form part of their name spelled differently from each other. One of them has First Form written as letters and the other has First Form written as a number as in 1ST rather than F-I-R-S-T spelling with Burkov. <laughs> Much like the information board in Canton City, now, on the title menu on Dragon Ball Universe 2, you can get information on ongoing online events. When you get max key, your aura will flare up, which looks particularly cool if you are in, for example, the Super Saiyan Blue Awoken skill and you keep getting max key over and over and over again. By using this Super Soul, which is a raid reward, you can change your basic key blast to a stone. Yeah. <laughs> but... So this is a bit of a fun one, which really doesn't mean anything. I just thought I'd put it on here just because. Bert is one of the characters that's actually added to the game's files and you could encounter if you connect or log in rather to Xenoverse 2, the content, well, content city in Xenoverse 2, while not being connected online. Not the single lobby. You can't be connected online. And if you do that, if you go into Canton City and fly around or reload the city if it's not there, eventually you will find the one, the only, Bert. You can use the Hyper Movement Evasive to freeze the basic combination string that you're doing and to, well, 
move at a hyper speed, <laughs> whatever, behind your opponent. It's a cool effect. It's not, well, it's not really efficient, but if you've got stamina spare and you're going to win or you just want to flex, I guess, then this does look so, so cool, as you can see right here. The hyper movement used to be the best evasive in all of Xenoverse 2 before it was nerfed. Before the nerf, Hyper Movement could break your opponent's guard if they went for an ultimate attack. It was incredibly overpowered. 24 hours before Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was revealed, on the 16th of May 2016, there was a teaser revealed. The Fly Through Time project or teaser or whatever you want to call it this had a 24 hour countdown timer and once the countdown timer hit zero they then officially revealed xenoverse 2 with the dragon ball xenoverse 2 reveal trailer during the fly through time countdown bandai manko had revealed that there's a hint on this project page now although i don't believe they ever came out and said what this hint was I was actually, I think, the first person to find out that the hint was if you were to connect the seven Dragon Balls and kind of play like a connect the dots with it, it would spell out XV, which was an obvious hint towards Xenoverse and ultimately because of, uh, well, at the time, it would have been Xenoverse 2, which once again would have been revealed once the timer hit zero legendary super saiyan broly is the only character that can appear in Canton city with an actual aura once you talk to him and he can become your mentor when you go and talk to him then in Canton city he doesn't have an aura it's only when you first approach him in Canton city that he has a rather menacing green aura oh there's kind of a xenoverse holiday in the sense of for a few days each year from the 14th through to the 16th of may of again a given year where we kind of but not really celebrate xenoverse the reason why it's these three dates is because typically in the past well past few years since 2014 started in 2014 on the 14th of may was when xenoverse was first leaked in that month's v jump before it was even referred to as xenoverse and at the time just dragon ball game project 2014 i think it was something like that and then a few years later in 2016 on the 16th of May 2016 was when Xenoverse was first teased as the Fly Through Time project and I believe on the 16th in 2020 was when we had the first scan for the free Supreme Kai of Time update for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. For some reason you can't change the name of your custom character, your avatar, your cac, again whatever you want to call it, when you use the Dragon Balls to summon Shenron, even though you can change pretty much essentially everything else. Ultra Instinct Sign Goku was added several years before he was a playable character. He was first added as part of a cutscene as part of the Tolkopedia mold. With the exception of Ultra Instinct Goku, the only other character in Xenoverse 2 that has auto dodge is, unsurprisingly enough, Whiz, but that's only in Parallel Quest 131. There's a few animations from Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 that were reused in Dragon Ball Legends. One of these being the Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Awoken skill animation in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, which is essentially the same as what they used for the Ultimate Gohan transformation animation in Dragon Ball Legends. Full Power Jiren's Grab will drain your opponent's stamina. You can make custom Jiren look like El Hermano. The male. Support for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was only originally planned for a year after its release. Now, keep in mind, by support, it doesn't necessarily mean DLC. It means DLC and the online events and patches and stuff like that. But because of the overwhelming success and, to some extent, the surprising success of Xenoverse 2, DLC, as well as support in both paid and free updates and patches and stuff like that, has been going on for several years since its release. Wearing an accessory which has sunglasses 
doesn't actually protect you from blinding skills such as Solar Flare. There's a feature in Xenoverse 2 that you may have forgotten about, and that is the Canton City Radio. And the reason why you may have forgotten about it is because there's only three, I guess, like broadcasts or what have you that, well, not broadcast, like it only plays three times and each time is a different broadcast. I think two of them are of Kale and Cauliflower and they talk about Super Saiyan Pink, not Rose, Super Saiyan Pink or something like that. And the other one is of Super Baby Vegeta 2. This was added in DLC 7, also known as Extra Pack 3, but it only plays once per avatar, per character, CAC again, whatever you want to call it, once you enter and exit or reload Canton City. You can't even talk to, is it Garrett, the robot, by the time space delivery, like that thing there to play it. So why this was added is a complete mystery because it only plays once per character and you'll never hear it on that character, at least as of right now, ever again it's so, why just why the volcanic wasteland stage is a reskin of the destroyed planet namic stage their special dialogue <laughs> dialogue in quotations between a Cyberman and a cell junior despite them never meeting at least as of right now in the series <laughs> take a listen to the special dialogue <laughs> <laughs> Despite not being able to stack Dragon Balls, as in once you've got all seven Dragon Balls, you can't get any more of them until you summon Shenron and use Dragon Balls, in very rare circumstances, you can kind of have ownership over multiple copies of Dragon Balls at the same time. For example, right here, I technically, as of this part here, like this footage, have three sets of Dragon Balls. The first set is what I have from getting them from Palo Quests, and the other two sets here are from the Time Space Delivery, from, well, participating in the Piccolo Exclusive World Tournament and the Gohan Exclusive World Tournaments to celebrate the release, the Japanese release, rather, of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. I don't know what's going to happen if I accept both of these at the same time. I'm sure they will get overwritten and I'll lose two copies of them. But it's just interesting that in very rare circumstances for, what, 90 days at most, you can technically have ownership, kind of, of multiple set of Dragon Balls in Xenoverse 2, despite Dragon Balls not being stackable. Going back now to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1, Krillin and Yamcha both have a preset in Xenoverse 1 which has Kaioken. Not times 3 or not times 20, I don't believe, just the normal Kaioken. And back in Xenoverse 1, bonus fact here, Kaioken was a super attack, not an awoken skill. This was taken out for Xenoverse 2, no idea why or why they didn't get Kaioken as a mentor preset. But yeah, back in Xenoverse 1, Krillin and Yamcha had Kaioken on one of their presets, because sure, why not? Even though Tien didn't, so it's not as if it's from training with King Kai. It's very strange. By using this Super Soul right here, you can change your basic Key Blast into a heart, like what Rubrian uses in Xenoverse 2 and in Dragon Ball Super. This is also a Super Soul that you can get from a raid. If you summon Shenron with the Dragon Balls and then wait, Shenron will get a little bit impatient with you. And there's a few lines that he says that I just think are out of character and just funny. So that said, have a listen. What's the matter? Hurry up and wish. Wishes, get your wishes here. Hello? Uh. Excuse me. I'm uh, waiting for your wish. Waiting. I was created by the gods. As a result, I cannot grant any wish that would be beyond the power of a god. Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta from specifically Xenoverse 1 is the rarest character in all of the Xenoverse series so far. And the reason being is because 
Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, as well as the Crystal and Golden Battle Suits, were a Xenoverse 1 pre order exclusive bonus. Although they did give out, as in Bandai Namco did give out some codes after Xenoverse 1 was released, if you were to get Xenoverse 1 right now, brand new, either as a physical game or as a digital download, the chances are you're not going to be able to get Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta as a playable character because, again, he was a pre order exclusive character and at least as of the recording and presumably upload of this video you can't download the pre-order or purchase the pre-order bonus digitally for Xenoverse 1 like how you can for Xenoverse 2 and if you do have a cold a physical cold for Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta in Xenoverse 1 there's a good chance that it's either been used already or more likely at this point that that cold would have expired. What we now know as Super Souls in Xenoverse 2 were originally known as Z Souls in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1. If you can defeat Final Form Mirror quick enough in the Xenoverse 2 story mode, there's actually a slightly different ending. There's also a secret ending in Xenoverse 1 if you can defeat Final Form Demon God Demigra quick enough. Take a look. <laughs> can't lose! Don't be a fool! Just making it this far is amazing on its own! You can get a completely neutral QQ bank if you mix together two of Yamcha's tops, the Yamcha Gi, with no mixing item. If you do this, I mean, there's no point in doing this because it's just for the novelty. Like, it's not going to help you. It could maybe make things more challenging, so you maybe play better. Maybe, I don't know. But if you do this, it won't take you many attempts, but keep in mind that there are other 
QQ bangs, like one star QQ bangs you can get from this if you decide to use this. Just keep trying it. The outfit is very, very, very cheap to buy in the clothing store. If you do it, fair play. There's no real reason to apart from novelty. And uh, yeah, that's how you make a neutral QQ bang. Speaking of QQ bangs, however, the absolute best QQ bang recipe as of right now in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is mixing the Bardock top, the Dragon Ball Z Bardock top, with the Beerus top and using a Super Mix Capsule Z as the mixing items. I believe this will get you access to any QQ bang, even a bad one. But if you're going to use this, this is more likely going to give you an excellent six star QQ bang. That is, well, there's no way to really say it. If you can get a good one, it's very overpowered and fantastic. The very, very first Canton, it's still funny, the very first Canton City TV broadcast in Xenoverse 2 didn't actually work after literal months of promotion and the Supreme Kai of Time with Trunks and Elder Kai reminding you about it every time you were to load into Canton City. After my, it's, honestly, it's still so funny that they couldn't get it to work. The first Canton City TV broadcast didn't work. This was the broadcast that sh revealed the winners of the Japanese Super Fashion Contest, I believe. I don't know because I couldn't see it because it didn't work. It didn't work for anybody. It was the same one that revealed or hinted at four pair of Jiren being added in at the time. The next update, which would have been Legendary Pack 2 for Dragon Ball Universe 2. And it didn't work for a single person. The countdown happened and then nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny. Although there is not an Ultra Instinct Awoken skill in Xenoverse 2, at least as of the recording of this video, there is a slight workaround, and that is a super attack, unsu well, not unsurprisingly, surprisingly belonging to Android 13. This skill is called Data Input, and if you use it, it will give you the same sort of effect as what Ultra Instinct Goku has, the Auto Dodge. Keep in mind, however, that basic key blasts will stop the Auto Dodge. But if you want to make an Ultra Instinct character, I guess, Data Input and then using Glovy Cyclone after it to prolong the effect of Data Input is a fairly decent workaround in all fairness. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is not crossplay. Legendary pack one for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 added the Canton City Vault. However, it's taken about 14 months for the winners to actually be revealed, even though the vaulting closed within the first few weeks of Legendary pack one being out and then additional vaults or categories being added for the Legendary pack two update. It took over a year and then some to get both the super mix capsule and super mix capsule z mixing items you need to do parallel quests but you need to do them by talking to the multiplayer modes ai computer wh yeah whatever i call him in canton city right by the giant arch if you go and do a normal parallel quest from the parallel quest robots these will not even be something that you can get don't know if this is a glitch or bug or what have you, but you have to do a parallel quest tour to get both Eva and or the Super Mix Capsule or better yet, the Super Mix Capsule Z. Again, you cannot get these just from doing a normal parallel quest. You have to talk to the multiplayer modes. Canton City Resident. If you have Super Mix Capsules and spare Demon Realm Crystals, you can mix them both together to get one Super Mix Capsule Z. Once you've defeated Raditz and can pick which character you want to appear as the Tolkien Tolkien hero, including your Xenoverse 1 characters, if you performed a data transfer at the very start of your Xenoverse 2 save file, some of these characters are actually the winners from, I believe, the last Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 world tournament the reward i believe they i forget when they said it but the reward was basically they will be added to a custom loading screen on ps4 i don't know about other consoles which look, does look quite nice actually and also to be part of the data transfer feature from xenoverse 1 to xenoverse 2 which in turn 
has immortalized them. Fair play. The official name for the Xenoverse 2 default hero is me, spelt M-E-E. -E. And the official name of the default Xenoverse 1 hero, the future warrior summoned by Shenron, his name, the official name, is Ace. With the exception of the Turn Golden Awoken skill, there are no other exclusive skills available for the Freezer race. For whatever reason, Shining Slash and Burning Slash are only available to Saiyans and Earthlings. Don't know why there's no sort of restrictions because it's just an animation that makes sense. Although there are other hybrid Saiyan skills that are available to anyone. For example, Burst Rush, for example, Besenko, for example, Heat Dome Attack. Back in Xenoverse 1, you couldn't see your opponent's key or stamina like how you could see it or how you can see it in Xenoverse 2. And side note, a bit of history here, I distinctly remember when this was in like the trailers and the promotion, you know, <laughs> leading up to Xenoverse 2 being released, the quote-unquote competitive Xenoverse 1 players Whatever that means, I don't know. I remember a lot of them at the time really complaining about this. <laughs> it's just so weird. The Hakai Ultimate Attack, also officially known as in Xenoverse 2, the Destructive Fission Ultimate Attack, was severely nerfed in the Legendary Pack 2 update, the free update rather, that balanced out skills, the patch updates and stuff like that. It got nerfed to the point where, as of right now at least, the way that Hakai works is if you take any damage at all, either it be from like a basic key blast or even a stone thrown by Jackal or have you. If you've launched the Hakai and receive any damage, regardless of how small it may be, it will disintegrate the Hakai. Whereas before the way it worked is that it would only disintegrate if you had your stamina broken or rather if you waited long enough and the Hakai didn't hit your opponent or if you didn't activate it. Thanks, Bandai. <laughs> if you have access to both the old Canton City server and the new Canton City server, as in you are playing on the PS4, PS5 version of Dragon Ball Universe 2, you can get two login bonuses per day, meaning technically speaking, if you're lucky and you time it right, technically you could get just from logging into Xenoverse 2, the you know, both the servers, you could technically get two Dragon Balls per day, depending on when the rewards are, as well as a lot of Zenny, Hercule badges, which can be sold for, well, a lot of Zenny, as well as, I think, 60 TP medals. Again, that's just from logging into both the old and the new Canton City servers. The Canton City TV is only available in the multi-lobbies. It is not available in the single lobbies. I have lost count how many comments I've had since this was added and introduced and people saying that they can't see it or where is it? I mean, it, if you're in the mortal lobby, it's you, you literally can't miss it. Just look up. It's only available in the multi lobbies, not in the single lobbies. You can actually throw Dragon Balls. If you go to a pedal quest where you have to go and collect the Dragon Balls and send them back to the time machine to complete that pedal quest, if you have either one Dragon Ball or if you're holding two Dragon Balls and then go for the grab input, you will throw them. There's a different animation depending on if you have one Dragon Ball or two Dragon Balls and you can technically throw them at your opponents. Back in Xenoverse 1, you could actually destroy parts of the mountain stage. But for whatever reason, in Xenoverse 2, they made it so you couldn't do it, even if you go to the exact same position on the exact same parallel quest. Why this was removed is beyond me because it was such a cool feature and you need to do it in Xenoverse 1 to get one of the Dragon Balls for one of the Dragon Ball parallel quests. Apart from being able to throw the Dragon Balls if you have them, you can also limit burst if you're holding them, either if you're holding one of them or if you're holding two. You can use the R3 input and I'd assume it'll just be whatever the right analog stick is on other consoles, but on PS4, PS5, 
Drive and PC, I believe. If you click R3 on your controller, you can actually use the Dragon Radar to get a better perspective of where the Dragon Balls are. If you throw the Dragon Balls so they are close to each other, and I believe you have to make them so them very close to each other, they will slightly glow like how they do when they are close to each other in the series. Going back to Xenoverse 1, once again, if you used any of the Super Saiyan forms and bonus fact, I guess, they weren't awoken in Xenoverse 1, they were ultimate, so a Super Saiyan ultimate attack, which is weird saying that, but regardless, if you used any of the Super Saiyan forms in Xenoverse 1, you would have unlimited key, and when you went for supers and ultimates, it wouldn't drain your key. Well, rather, when you're in these forms, your key will constantly drain, unless you were to use a charge skill or a specific super soul, etc but you wouldn't lose key specifically for going for a super or an ultimate attack. Now, although wearing sunglasses on an outfit, an accessory or what have you, won't protect you from skills such as solar flare, if you use this super soul here, you will be able to protect yourself and your allies from blinding skills such as the solar flare. Even if you're not wearing sunglasses because sure, why not? So if you summon one of the Zeno CC mascots and then use the Kamehameha pose, it will mimic you. And I never knew this, so fair play. <laughs> Android 21 has what is probably the most unique charged key blast in all of Dragon Ball Universe 2, which is this one right here. And the reason I say this is because at least as of the upload or rather the recording of this part right here and this video in general, there is no way to have this on your custom character. Like like how you can change it to like a paralyzed key blast, a charge key, or a barrage key blast, rush key blast, you know, what you want to call it, a heavy. There's no super lot to do that, and there's no way, again, as of right now, to change it to this, and there's no other character and no other preset, again, as of right now, that will have this on their character. If you wear the rosy outfit on your freeze race character and then use the turn golden awoken skill, it will glitch out and make the rosy outfit completely black. Much like with Super Saiyan Kefla, first form cell also has two different grabs. One of them is if you're in the air, and the other one is if you're on the ground. The DLC vehicle, the Space Pod vehicle, is the only vehicle in Xenoverse 2 right now that if you fall off of the city and once you're teleported back, it will have a different sound effect. Take a listen. There is a character in Canton City with this name right here. I don't know how you pronounce it, Zazomu? I don't, whatever. But you may have noticed that this character has a name that is very, very similar to an official Dragon Ball character, that being Zamasu. And I believe this character is part of the Hero Coliseum. I'm only mentioning that because Zamasu was revealed in Dragon Ball Super in 2016, but the Hero Coliseum wasn't added until late 2017. So they knew of Zamasu, so why they left this in? I mean, it's a different character, but it's so, so eerily close to Zamasu. It's literally one letter off. There is a somewhat, but not really, secret preset of Beerus, kind of, but again, not really, and that's preset two, which at first glance, you may not notice there's anything different, but if you look at Beerus's head, he's actually got the Wiz symbol on his head. Play the Xenoverse 2 story mode and you'll understand why. But this is something that I didn't realize until much, 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 much later on in Xenoverse 2's life cycle. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 is not cancelled. Ah, this is a weird one. So as of the upload, well, presumably as of the upload of this video, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 has not been announced or leaked or anything like that. Every once in a while, like every couple of weeks, I'll either get a comment on my channel or a tweet on the at is universe free confirmed yet Twitter account, which I do run. Link in the description to my link tree, blah, blah, blah. Go give it a follow. I'll get a comment or a tweet of someone saying, I'll just stop it. Bandai 
have said that they are not doing Xenoverse 3 or something very similar to that, like, oh, they said that it's cancelled. No, this is not true in any way, shape or form. For it to be cancelled, they would have had to have announced it first. And again, as of right now, they have not done that. I don't know for sure where this rumour started, but I think it started from an interview that the Dragon Ball Fighters producer gave saying something about something about the future of Xenoverse or something like that and it was mistranslated but that's all people need for people to run with it so again as of right now Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 is not cancelled it's not announced or anything like that but with that said, it might, maybe, and this isn't a hint at anything, but it might, maybe, who knows, be worth just keeping a bit of an eye out. But if you get over 99 hits in a single combo, instead of saying 100 and then 101 and then going forward from there, it will just say a Z combo. In the early days of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, if you used the Super Key Explosion Ultimate Attack specifically on the Hyperbolic Time Chamber stage inside the Time Chamber, it used to hard crash the game. I don't know if this happened on Xbox or PC, it happened on a PS4 version. I may have covered it in a video from back then, but this was patched out a very, very, very long time ago. I think it was even patched out before they even announced Xenoverse 2 being released on the Switch version. But yeah, it just used to crash the game, which, I mean, it's not that interesting. Well, I think it's interesting because it's a piece of Xenoverse 2 history. I mean, you can see in this clip here, I tried to do it for the purposes of this video, but no, it was patched out a very long time ago. If you've already got Final Form Mirror, Demon God Demigra, and Final Form Grotesque Merge Zomasu, whatever you want to call him, unlocked via the gifts, if you then get those gifts again and then talk to Fu in Canton City and then hand over one of those gifts, because you've already got those characters unlocked, instead, he will give you 10 Demon Realm Crystals, which, as we've already mentioned, for QQ Bangs are exceptionally useful. Again, that's only if you've already given him either of those three gifts or just one of them, which is why you may see in some videos I have 10 of the, I think it's the Mirror Gift, just in case in the future, if I need demon crystals quickly. The time nest in Xenoverse 2 uses different shaders compared to the rest of Canton City. Although this isn't confirmed, the reason for this is more than likely, well probably because the time nest could have been copy and pasted from Xenoverse 1 directly into Xenoverse 2 and at least as of right now they've not updated the shader from the time nest compared to the rest of Canton city you can kind of but not really have two different colors for your hair in xenoverse 2 if you have black hair and then wear the baby trunks hat accessory it's technically two different hair colors oh. <laughs> if you're lucky you can pick up a turtle hermit shell accessory by picking up one of the items at the resort area in Canton City. Artwork number one is a reference to the iconic Goku versus Freezer pose in Dragon Ball Z on the Xenoverse 2, played out by Supreme Kai of Time and Zeno Trunks. There's a few secret trophies and I guess on the Xbox and Steam achievements you can get in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The reason why these are kind of secret is because they don't automatically pop up once you've met the requirements. One of these is for getting to level 99, as of right now, the max level in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Once you've reached level 99, talk to this character here in Canton City, Oshi, who is by, well, fairly close to the Dragon Ball pedestal, and then once you once you are level 99, talk to him and you'll then get a trophy or an achievement for reaching level 99. Same thing, I think if you get 70 or more fig different unique figurines from the Hero Coliseum, do that, talk to Ashi, and you will then get a trophy and or, or rather, or an achievement. 
Vegito is playable in both Dragon Ball Xenoverse games, Xenoverse 1 and Xenoverse 2, but he does not appear in the main story modes. Yes, in Xenoverse 2, he appears as Super Saiyan Blue Vegito in a DLC story mode mission and also in the Tolkopedia, but in terms of the main, I guess, like base game, he does not appear as any character, well, he doesn't appear in the story mode for either games, despite being a playable character. Custom Future Trunks is actually a custom Xeno Trunks, not necessarily Future Trunks because of, well, the lung cult that he has. This is the Xeno version, not the Future version, even though it's kind of, but not really the same character. In Super Dragon Ball Heroes, it's so weird, but yeah, in Xenoverse 2, custom Future Trunks is technically Xeno Trunks. There's a very subtle reference to the Dragon Ball Raging Blast series in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, and I think also technically in Xenoverse 1 as well. You can get, well, you can hear this from completing the final Goku Mentor mission. It's the mission where if you complete it, you unlock the Super Kamehameha Ultimate Attack. Take a listen. That's enough. I don't think I have anything else I can teach you. Nuts! You really are incredible! It was a raging blast fighting with you! Before it was revealed to be called Xenoverse, what we now know as Dragon Ball Xenoverse was first known as Dragon Ball Z Project 2014. And a few bonus facts for you here relating to this. It wasn't revealed to be Xenoverse until that year's E3. So E3 2014, when they revealed the official trailer and called it Dragon Ball Xenoverse. And also, once again, a bit of a bonus fact for you here. Because of, again, mistranslations, rumors, mishearing things and stuff like that, before it was called Xenoverse, for like maybe an hour, maybe a couple of hours, or maybe just for like under an hour around like that sort of time frame i guess before the trailer was officially officially revealed we thought oh it's either going to be called xenoverse or again because of mistranslations and mishearing things and stuff like that it was either going to be called xenoverse or xeno birth not xeno as in Z grand xeno because he wasn't even introduced yet just like xeno birth xenoverse do you get it? The water, quote unquote, food that you can buy from the item shop in Xenoverse 2 is by far the best, again, quote unquote, food you can buy to feed Margin Boo to then make him, you know, make the other margins appear so you can get the items from them. And if you're on a margin character, to unlock the purification mission. The reason this is the best is because I believe you unlock this very, very early on, if not at the very start, or rather after defeating Raditz or getting access to the five time rifts. And also because of how cheap it is. The only sort of, I guess, issue, but it's not an issue, is that I think it takes 30 or 33 to fill up the, his uh, food bar once. So you might have to, well, you will be making just a couple of the trips from the item shop to the Margin Boo House Time Rift in order to max it out, but this is by far the easiest method. And with exception maybe of Kyle Ken, because of this method, Purification is the second easiest and quickest awoken skill to actually unlock in Xenoverse 2. The further you progress through the Hero Coliseum, the more vibrant Canton City will become. The further you get in terms of completing the story mode mission in the Hero Coliseum, as well as the free mode missions, more characters related to the Hero Coliseum will appear all over Canton City for you to challenge to a Hero Coliseum match and stuff like that. Meaning that if you're willing to put the time in to, you know, to complete all of the Hero Coliseum, you're gonna be rewarded by Canton City just feeling a bit more alive. Base form Vegeta is significantly more stronger than Super Villainous Mold Janemba. Let me explain, as you can see right here. Vegeta in his base form defeats a powered up Janemba, again, Vegeta's in his base form, just by using a final flash. This doesn't matter, and I'm only mentioning this because this is somewhat of an inside joke or a running joke on my channel when I do my Xenoverse 2 challenge videos. It doesn't matter, it's not serious, it's dumb, I love it. 
But given that it took Goku and Vegeta to not only fuse to make Gogeta, but for it to be Super Saiyan Gogeta to defeat a weaker version of Janemba, given that Vegeta in a weaker form can one-shot a stronger version of that character, makes no sense. I mean, could you at least have made him Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 2, maybe? <laughs> if you have a bald, sane, custom character, Avatar, Kak, whatever you want to call it, and then use Super Saiyan 3, you will get a full head of hair. Because, yeah. <laughs> but there's a true secret ending to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, and the way you get it is by failing... Yes, you heard me right. It's by failing this mission right here at a certain part in the mission. This is a this is an extra mission from the Legendary Pack 2 DLC. And if you fail this mission at a certain point, then well, this cutscene will play. Kakarot. Bardock! It's time to change the future together! Ah! Yeah, but did you predict this? Coordinate set. What? Reza! Ah! Is that all? Nope. Just a little for good measure. Ah! You're going down, Frieza. Wait! I'll make you the highest ranking commander of the Frieza Falls! We'll rule together! This will change everything. You're... DEAD! Do it succeed against Inferior! Ah, uh, okay, maybe we aim too high. And those were 100 more tips, tricks, and trivia that you may not have known about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Do stay tuned because in a moment, there'll be a clickable card on the screen, which will be technically part one to this, as this was 101 all the way to 200. So if you want to see the first 100, again, do stay tuned. There'll be something you can click on in a moment on the screen to take you to that video. Now, I would love to do a part three and continue this series indefinitely only issue being is that i don't think i'll be able to come up with another hundred on my own even though i did use quite a few in this video that you guys have suggested from my previous video in the series so that said if you want to see a part three and onwards of this series do leave your useful tips tricks and trivia in the comment section of this video and i will use them for future parts in this sort of series that i have going and stuff like that if i can get another list done sooner well soon then part three will be out sooner rather than later instead of waiting however long it's been since part one now there was also one thing or one tip or trivia in this video that's also in the first part and i didn't realize it until very later on but instead of removing it i thought no i'll keep it in and see if you guys know what that one was because it's something that honestly how funny and unfortunate it was. It deserves to be in this one. And I might even point in the third one because <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> right? So, yeah. With that said, thank you for watching. Leave your tips and all that good stuff in the comments. Part three will be out at some point when it's up to you guys when you leave your tips and all that. And with that said, thank you for watching once again. And I will see you next time. Ah.